Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I am your host Narad Muni and I am a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I am a travelling musician and a storyteller. So the way I am doing my job is by podcast. This week, we are going to learn about Ganga. The river Ganga is a goddess and she has a very interesting story. You'll hear what happens if you pierce the fabric of the universe. And if your pet horse wanders off, it's best not to accuse a meditating stranger of having stolen it. You might recall the story of Vaman, the avatar of Vishnu we covered recently in mini episode 37.5. If you haven't, here's a quick summary. The Asur king Bali had taken over all the three worlds, the earth, the heavens and hell. Who could possibly restore these to the devs? It had to be someone from the Holy Trinity. Shiva the destroyer, Vishnu the preserver, or Brahma the creator, who also happens to be my dad. If you think Shiva the destroyer destroyed Bali, or that Brahma simply created a parallel universe for the devs, you'd be totally wrong. It fell to the preserver to upset the balance of power here. He disguised himself as a rishi and asked Bali for enough land to cover three small steps. The moment Bali agreed, Vishnu burst into his regular size and easily covered the entire universe in just three steps. And that's how he won it back for the devs. There was one unintended consequence though. As Vishnu was expanding into a gigantic person capable of covering the entire universe, his little toenail scratched against the very fabric of the universe. Now, the science-minded folk amongst you might suggest that this is the real explanation for black holes. Not so. As everyone knows, the universe is surrounded by... Water. Yes. Pure old H2O. So when there was a tear in the fabric of the universe, water from the surrounding ocean burst through. Congratulations! There's a happy little accident, said Shiva and Brahma, shaking Vishnu's hand. You've just had a baby girl river. And so that's how Ganga was born. But then... When they saw Ganga rushing towards the earth, Brahma got a little worried. He looked at his watch. Is it time for the next flood already? He asked. Nope, said Shiva. And he dived into action. You might expect him to have patched the fabric of the universe. But no. He trapped Ganga in his hair. As Vishnu and Brahma looked at him surprised, Shiva said, What? Why are you staring? Trust me, this will work. Besides, it'll keep my hair moist and glossy with a nice texture. Whatever, said Brahma and Vishnu as they walked off. So there wasn't a flood on earth then. Actually, It was quite the opposite. There was a drought all over the world. In the middle of a drought, there was a king, Sagar, who was worried about what was to him a much bigger problem. He had two queens, Sumati and Keshini, but no heirs. He did what several others in this podcast have done before. He prayed. Instead of praying to Brahma the creator to, you know, create a baby for him, 
the king and queens went to the Himalayas. They prayed to Shiva, the destroyer. Shiva appeared and granted their wish. They had asked for one son, but they were about to get several. Sumati and Keshni began to look worried. They had wanted a child or two, not several. Relax, said Shiv. You, Keshini, will have one son. Keshini sighed with relief. Shiva continued, Sumati will have 60,000. And at that, Sumati fainted. That is a bit of an imbalance, said Sagar. Shiva replied, I suppose I could do one small tweak. All right. So Sumati's 60,000 kids will die childless, but Keshini's one son will carry on your dynasty. There, I think that's about balanced. By now, I can't stay. I have another praying Rishi. There, three mountains over. And with that, Shiva the Destroyer disappeared, leaving the king and queen speechless. In no time, the kids were born. Sumati set the world record for most births at the same time. But thankfully, it was a painless process for her because the kids were born by divine intervention. The kids grew up all strong and intelligent and everything. But Keshini's son was quite the brat. He was downright evil. Thankfully though, his son was the perfect gentleman. Many years passed, and then King Sagar did the Ashwamedh. That's a ritual to try and expand the kingdom. The idea is that a horse is let loose. Wherever it wanders, the king of that land either gives up his land or fights. We had previously prominently featured this in episode 7, Kingdom by Horse. King Sagar's horse wandered off a long distance. It was followed by Sumati's 60,000 sons. The horse eventually wandered next to a meditating Rishi. If you've been listening to these podcasts, that should not surprise you. Rishis were the number one profession in ancient India, and meditating was the number one pastime. This Rishi, whose name was Kapil, was a particularly powerful one. But Sumati's sons did not know that. They made a big mistake. They accused Kapil of having stolen the horse. A completely baseless accusation. Kapil looked like he hadn't even moved at all. He even had creepers growing on him. But the boys persisted. They poked at Kapil until Kapil suddenly opened his eyes. And that was a mistake. Kapil was like Cyclops from the X-Men. When he opened his eyes, there were optic blasts all around destroying all 60,000 of Sumati's sons. Strangely, the horse was spared. When Sagar's kids did not return, he sent his grandson after them. Well, the grandson found 60,000 ghosts wandering around, suffering. But there was nothing he could do about liberating them. He prayed to the gods, but there was no answer and no voicemail either. Ultimately, on his deathbed, he made his son promise him that he would do everything in his power to find a solution. Well, the son couldn't, but he did the next best thing. He made his son promise him the same thing. That son, Bhagirath, had an idea. He prayed to Shiva, just like his ancestors had done. But this time, it worked. 
Shiva had an elegant solution. I can fix that. And what's more, I can also solve your drought problem. What drought problem? Asked Bhagirath, who, just like his ancestors, was quite oblivious to the suffering of his people. But Shiva was busy loosening his hair. I think it's moist enough by now, he muttered. He let out a tiny bit of Ganga, and she trickled out and burst through the land. She flowed right over all 60,000 wandering coasts, and that liberated their souls. People all over the country rejoiced. Not because their poltergeists had been exorcised, but because they now had water for drinking, for irrigation and for their cattle. That is how the Ganga came to earth. She has a purifying element and that is how she could liberate Sumati's sons. It is this purifying element that people look for when they visit the Ganga. That's all for now. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. Thanks to all you listeners for your continued support. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. In the next mini-episode, we'll meet the wife of someone whom we have met before. Ancient India is not typically known for gender equality. But this character is an exception. But the equality only lasted during her life, during her time on Earth. While her seven companion rishis were placed in the sky as the constellation Great Bear or the Big Dipper, she is only represented by a tiny dim star that orbits one of the others. I'll see you later.